And we're back for episode 40 of Yaku- <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was about to say Yakuza 0. Sorry, I got Yakuza 0 on the mind. Although I literally just recorded the last episode of Yakuza 0. And fun fact, how do I know the actual episode number this time around? Well, that's because I finally organized my my recording sessions. I finally numbered the files and everything. Hopefully I didn't number, number them incorrectly because I was just editing <laughs> episode 20, 25, I think, or 24 of, of Triangle Strategy. And I realized that but, um, uh, I had numbered the episodes wrong because I had a uh, episode 24 was just a whole bunch of grinding and no actual, no actual, um, commentary or anything then then i realized that i accidentally numbered episode uh 25 25 instead of episode 24 but whatever we're good i did finally get the cat lore and i finished upgrading everyone in anything and everything well aside from kosabar who's still level 49 for some reason but we got everyone's weapon rank abilities thing so now they're at their perfect stats with all of their things unlocked so the way i was able to get uh, all the material i needed for this is that apparently once you reach um your third new game plus run lionel starts selling a superior material at just uh with 99 in stock so you know you can probably get anything and everything in uh just you know two restock sessions of uh lionel i think i mentioned this before or, or we've seen it before but but lionel basically has a like a set period where he restocks his items so once you bought everything out, he'll eventually restock everything. I got nearly everyone done with the first time around with Lionel because he has 99 superior material of everything. Uh, after that, I just needed to wait like one more restock session before I could actually fully upgrade everyone. So now we got everyone with all their things. Look at that. Cool. Amazing. <laughs> Incredible. We even got Giovanna her thing, unfortunately. Although I didn't really want to because I didn't wanna I didn't wanna grind more stuff for her. But here you are. We got anything and everything. I will say it took me super long to get all the material because the superior material is like 1,500 um, coin, which is pretty expensive and it stacks up real quick whenever you're trying to upgrade characters. But thankfully we got it all. It just took so much time to grind it all though because i did tell you guys that there was a a quick method to you know grind money because i found like a video on it but i'm guessing that method only works on like normal or easy mode because i tried doing it with um i think it's with izana that you have to do it and it's this one right no it's not that one i think it's this one i can't remember her anymore but basically you go to conquer the arena get izana uh get her ultimate ability thing equip her with the i think golden pinky ring and you just try and kill everyone <laughs> with her ultimate ability i tried doing that i had her at level 50 i got all her ability things unlocked and everything but i'm guessing since we're on hard mode she couldn't actually finish her finish everyone off unfortunately so i couldn't grind like you know the normal easy method like i wanted to in this one right here instead we got stuck doing close quarter combats like a hundred million times like let me show you guys how many times i had to deploy roland and lionel to get all the money i needed that look at that they're at 244 deployment sessions already. It took me so long to grind the money needed for all of this. So yeah, that was a journey and a half to get. I will also say that playing through the game in hard mode with everything being level 50 is surprisingly... I won't say it's difficult, it's just very tedious and annoying because while the enemies don't have like new abilities or anything too scary on them, it's just, you know, the same fights from before but, you know, level 50 now. It's still super annoying to deal with because they have- they still have those increased stats which make them- makes them difficult to kill. But we've made it through to this point now so might as well see it through. I will say now that I probably won't do the golden run I said I was gonna do it at the end of this because I'm already starting to feel burnt out on redoing all these battles so many times so i probably won't do the golden run final route once again like i said i would <laughs> instead i'm probably just gonna leave that in the you know the possible future stream thing i i've been talking about for so long now which i still don't know whether that's ever gonna happen or not but whatever aside from that look at this everyone's got their weapon rank things wow incredible <laughs> so much money and material went into this but we don't have to worry about this, at least not until we get the last two recruits we can get, thankfully. Uh, also, something interesting to know is apparently once you unlock their ultimate abilities, all these characters have unique lines for it. Unfortunately, I did miss out on Lionel's, 
Jens and Hosabar's unique lines, as well as Archibald. Sorry, I forgot about you, Archibald. But um, let's look at everyone else's uh, unique lines real quick before I forget. With the Smithy's help, I've learned a new technique that should prove a boon in, in future battles. It's called Above and Beyond, and with it, I can heal all your wounds. Or wounds, I don't know. <laughs> Fight on, knowing that I will come to your aid whenever you need healing. Lord Serenoa, guess what? I learned this new skill called Copycat, so now I can copy what everyone else does. Let me show it to you sometime, okay? Pretty please, I know you'll just love it. I have news. With the blacksmith's aid, I have managed to master a new skill. One that allows me to intimidate enemies within a certain range. I should be much more helpful in battle now. Allow me to join the vanguard when next we face combat. Now that our little smith has upgraded my fan, I've mastered a new dance. I call it the power of love. Anyone who sees it will be compelled to do exactly as I say. How would you like a sneak peek, hmm? <laughs> I'm only joking. Though I must say, even your look of terror is quite becoming. <laughs> I wonder why... Why Serena always looks at her with terror whenever she says lines like that. It would have been nice if they had like a unique character story <laughs> because of that, but... Oh well. I have learned a new technique thanks to this tempered spear. I can use high jump in battle to assail any who would stand in our way. I am far stronger than I was that day. I swear never to be bested in combat again. I love how how Maxwell is basically a dragoon from Final Fantasy. It's so cool. Is that what it's called? Is it dragoon? I don't know. I know there's like a, a class or boss or something in Final Fantasy that uses jump. So that's what I'm thinking of. My great spear is sharper than ever thanks to the blacksmith. Now I shall be able to unleash my greatest technique, Bloody Cross. Leave the vanguard to me. You're not gonna explain why you couldn't use that this whole time when you could- You could clearly use that during our battles of Laura. Like, are you holding out on me? I still love you though. I had a vision, and in it, I saw a way to change time and space itself. I call it Reverse Space Time. I'm sure it will be of help in the battle ahead. My visions told me so. Lord Serenoa, I learned a new skill. Can you believe it? I call it Mystic Beam. I can cast it on friend and foe alike. Isn't it neat? It's one of my grandfather's greatest spells. The fine shield your smitty crafted for me has given me the idea for a new technique. I call it the Rampart, and with it I shall defend the allies nearest me. Permit me to mount a stout defense on the vanguard, my lord. Lord Serenoa, the smithy in your employ has accelerated the pace of my research. Behold, my latest creation. I call it Glacial Moon. This is but one of the many abilities with which I will help lead you to victory, my lord. I shall keep you apprised of further developments. Greetings, Lord Serenoa. Today as ever, I am thankful to be at your service. Oh, oh yeah, I unlocked her thing <laughs> way before anyone else's. Oh, I think, did I miss on her? I, I don't remember. I feel like I talked to her before, maybe? I really can't remember anymore. Oh well. Lord Serenoa, I thank you enough for bestowing this old maid with such an incredible weapon. With these hands, I remembered a technique I have long since sealed away. The Skyward Fist. It unleashes a torrent of raw power at the skies. This is what earned me the name Iron Fist all those years ago. But it makes my back ache something fierce, so I pray we never have to use it. Oh ho 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 ho. I am so grateful for the Kaleidoscope, Lord Saranoa. Thanks to your generosity. I have discovered a new method of calculation. I call it target brackets HP underscore seven bracket exclamation point. If my calculations are accurate, I will be able to show you something amazing in our next battle. What that something is exactly I do not know. My apologies for being such a useless failure. Aw, don't say that, Decimal. Level up. Sorry, I just love Decimal. <laughs> He's so adorable. I came up with a new ability thanks to the bow your smitty made for me. I call it Rain of Arrows. Narcellius got archers of plenty, but only one can send arrows enough for an army raining down on the battle. I aim to use it in the battles to come. You'll see. Lord Serenoa, listen to this. The Tempered Pickaxe has helped me break new ground, 
literally and figuratively. I call my new technique Skea's Roar, nifty name, isn't it? I'm sure it will be of great help in the coming battles. Just say the word and I'll be there. Last one. My prayers have been answered, Lord Sarnoa. The heavens have granted me new power. I shall use the right of thunderstorms to smite any who would stand in your way. My powers are yours until the day even the heavens sing your praises. That was nice. Okay, I think- Oh yeah! Uh, I, I think I already said this, but I got the cat lore finally. So let's take a look at that. I did get a slight sneak peek at it on accident, and I think it, it was the cats saying bad things about humans. So let's- I'm excited to read this. Cat Chronicles. I was really surprised to find out that the last cat I was missing was literally just a cat in, um, an S-Frost. I thought that I was missing one more, like, in Tellier or something, but nope. We're apparently good. Humans are foolish. Unlike us cats, they do not know when to give up. Humans are cunning. They are more willing to deceive others than we are. Humans are greedy. They fight for territory more fiercely than we do. Humans are cruel. They torment their prey more thoroughly than we do. Humans are rash. They could learn a thing or two from us about patience. Humans are dimwits. They are too slow to save their fish from our paws. Humans are thick-headed. They trample carelessly upon our tails, aww. Humans are dishonest. They call cats other than their own. Cute. <laughs> really. Still, humans are dear to us. They love us no matter what. Rub against their legs and they will pet us to our heart's content. Humans are foolish after all. <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> I'm kind of sad it wasn't actual like cat lore. Like, explaining why they're just, you know, lying everywhere. But I appreciate this. This is so cute. It also would have been nice if they had, like, a drawing or something at the bottom. You know, just that cat chillaxing with Serenor or something. But oh well. I'll take what I can get. Okay. I think that's all I needed to talk about. So we're finally done with the rambling dons. Uh, so we've made it to, I think, chapter 7? Is this chapter 7? No, chapter 8, sorry. Uh, so far we've been making all of the... Well, actually, I lied. I was about to say we've been making all the, um... Frederica choices, but not really, because this is Frederica wanted to go to Hyacinth over there. But this was Frederica's choice, uh, not to sacrifice Roland. So we're here now at chapter eight, where we have to decide whether to, you know, believe uh, Tellur and go quote unquote team up with him and, you know, work together to take out Nesfrost, or choose to not trust them and stay home. But since we've already decided before to, um, not trust them and <laughs> been proven right of how much of a jerk Tellur is, this time around we're gonna quote unquote trust them and, you know, go work together with him. Unfortunately, I am going against Frederica's choice, but oh well, most of the choices I'm gonna make from here on out are gonna be like Frederica choices, so I'm sure Frederica's gonna be happy this route since this is gonna be her ending route. Okay, so I just just gotta convince Frederica, Gila, Anna, and Benedict. Okay. Everyone has their suspicions over Lord Silvio's offer, but I think we can guess his in his true intentions easily enough. Whatever house Tellier's aim might be, I am certain we can use it to our advantage. Let's ally with Silvio. An alliance with House Tellier is certainly worth considering. Pray tell me what swayed you, my lord. I'm just gonna go with the bottom one. Usually the bottom one is the right answer. I would welcome any help we could get in protecting Prince Roll. Actually, that doesn't sound right. No matter the course, we will need greater numbers to see it through. Joining hands with a fellow High House will expand the paths available to us. The Crown City has fallen, making the movements of the High Houses more important than ever. Joining forces is the first step in gaining new allies. I'm just gonna go with the bottom one. Quite impossible. If Prince Roland is your concern, I pray you be more prudent in your judgments. Do not underestimate the desperation of those who believe they have much to lose. They may even resort to concerning with the enemy if the need if the need arose. So there is a chance Lord Silvio may turn on us, assuming he hasn't already. Precisely, my lord. If you seek to protect his highness, I suggest you approach those outside this house with utmost caution. Nevertheless, it seems you, too, harbor suspicions over Lord Silvio's character. And? Do you really think it would be to our advantage to ally ourselves with such a dubious man? I would ally with him only to ensure our survival. I'm certain both his house's might and their name would serve us well. I do not intend to put my blind trust in Lord Silvio. As we are now, though, it is an offer we cannot refuse. I would do all I could to better our situation, even if it's just a little. To that end, an alliance would be most welcome. I'm gonna go with top one, because I feel like that one works best ah. with Benedict. A 
fine resolve, my lord. If we only use those we can trust, we, we would find ourselves at an impasse before long. A leader must be possessed of a capacious mind, <laughs> just as you are. Oh, cool. I didn't convince him. Do you truly think allying ourselves with House Talior would stop the spread of the war? I... I... It makes me wonder if... If it would only be pouring oil on the fire. Uh, ally with Teller. What do you think of Lord Sylvia's proposal, Serenoa? Our forces need all the help they can get, and I believe House Tellier could provide us some much-needed relief on the battlefield. It would be a boon to his soldiers and civilians alike if House Tellier would grant us food and provisions. An alliance between the High Houses would lift the people's spirit, something sorely, sor wait, oh sorry, <laughs> sorely needed in times like these. Let's just go with surely. the bottom one. I have heard tell of the High Houses loyalty to the Crown. An alliance may very well give the people of Glenbrook something to hope for in these dark times. Perhaps my worries are un were unfounded. Is there something about House Talier that concerns you, Federico? There is indeed. I cannot help but wonder what Lord Silvio's true intentions are, and if Esfrost has some part to play in all of this. Esfrost will likely strike at us again before we know it. They are not the type to well in defeat. If we refuse Lord Sylvia's offer, there is a chance Esfrost will bring him to heal instead. There is a chance the Duchy has already recruited House Tellier to their cause. Let's just go with the bottom one. No! In which case, would it not be better to refuse Lord Sylvia's proposal? It is merely a possibility. We must look at the situation from all angles before we make our decision. You speak true, Serenoa. Allow me to think on the matter just a little more. Okay, so I guess I convinced her, surprisingly enough. I hear that Tellier the Main is known for its wine, not warriors. It makes me wonder if it is truly necessary for us to join forces at a time like this. I would have no qualms if Lord Silvio were a man of upstanding character. But the rumors I hear only speak to this contrary. The more allies one can avail themselves to, the better. That being said, an untrustworthy ally avails no one. Would you not agree? The path before us now are regret ugh, regrettably few, but new allies will open up new options. We must first and foremost address our supply shortage. House Tellier could help us there. Our forces are dwindl dwindling from all the battles we face. House Wolfort needs allies if, if we are to survive. Let's just go with the bottom one. I don't think so. Okay. We contended against the Duchy's forces all on our own. It stands to reason we would sustain considerable losses. Even so, House Tellier might be more of a hindrance than help on the field. From what I hear, their soldiers want for more than just experience in battle. I doubt putting our faith in Lord Silvio would be worth any of the additional forces that might avail us to. Alright, okay, so bottom one wasn't the answer this time around. Lord, Lord Serenoa, our soldiers are exhausted after our last battle with Esfrost. I don't know why I suddenly can't read again, but whatever. I know we need all the help we can get, but even so, I cannot find it in me to trust House Tellier. Okay, but what if you do? Pray tell, Lord Cernal. What do you think of Lord Silvio's offer? An alliance between the high- Okay, that's the same. The greater our forces, the better we may finally be able to catch our breath if we have more soldiers on our side. For the support, considering those who would aid us are- Eight us now are few and far between. I'm just gonna go with the bottom one again. Quite true. I must admit, it lifts even my spirits to think about. No doubt House Fox would feel the same. I see now that it is time for the High Houses to stand together and drive back the Duchy. Truth be told, I have my reservations about Lord Silvio, who devised the entire plan. Then? If you don't mind my asking, what makes you so sure we should ally with him? Esfros has placed a bounty on Roland's hand. The more allies we have, the safer he should be. The repeated battles are taking their toll on the domain. I would ask for House Tellier's support to ease the suffering of my people. There is no telling when Esfros will strike at us again. We must take every measure we can to see if we are prepared. Let's go with the top one. Word of Benedict's effort in procuring supplies has reached even Prince Roland and myself. Truly? I suppose it would be best to keep a wary eye on House Tellier as we replenish our reserves. I have chosen. I am glad we had the chance to speak, Lord Serenoa. It has helped clear my thoughts on the matter. Okay. That should be more than enough. 
So let's end this. It is time to cast our votes. Do we accept House Tellior's proposal or go our own way? Approach the scales of conviction with your token at the ready. Forgive me, my lord. I understand your feelings, my lord, but I think it unwise to follow that path at this time. Okay, whatever, Benedict. I wholeheartedly agree. I agree with you, Serenoa. You aren't wrong, but... My mind is made up. Wait, what? Did she vote against us? Gila, why? I have chosen. I believe you have the right of it, Lord Serenoa. Oops, I accidentally skipped that. <laughs> Sorry, I was just trying to speed it up a little bit. Look at that. Gila and Benedict. The way forward is decided. We join forces with House Tellior and defy the Duchy's wrath. Huzzah! The tidings of our alliance will no doubt bring relief to the aching hearts of our people. Now then, Prince Roland, you and all of House Wolfort simply must come to Talior. We shall. Thank you. You needn't worry about a thing. Leave everything in my capable hands. I must make haste to Talior. I shall throw a grand banquet to commemorate the occasion. Hardly the time for celebrations. <sighs> Is something on your mind, Benedict? No, my lord. The weather being completed. Lord Silvio of Tellior offers the solitary House Wolfort an ally, and a place of protection for Roland. Serenoa accepts his offer, and Silvio puts his plan to ensnare his new allies into motion. Chapter 8, Part 2, Sleep With One Eye Open. Hey, Rufus. Uh, no, no, no! Spare me! I beg you! That's enough, Rufus. You call these men soldiers, Silvio? They haven't got any spine. You can take your frustrations out on House Wolfort. They accepted my gracious offer. I would have preferred they hadn't. I hate dirty jobs. I expect double for this one. And you shall have it. You will strike once the banquet is finished. Only Roland need live. Okay, do we got some new side stories? Oh wait, I didn't even read the description. Oh well, whatever. It might be something we already seen. Oh yeah, we already seen this. Uh, the bandits Travis and Trish discuss rumors of had the bounty on certain on a certain someone's head.
I don't know what to expect now that Esfrost's taken over Glenbrook. I heard they put a huge bounty on the prince's head. We can make a killing if we catch him. I always dreamed of kidnapping royalty. <laughs> but the prince of a crumbling kingdom? Mm. They'd probably kill him if we turned him over. The reward is tempting, though. The reward is tempting, though. I can't remember if we saw this before. <laughs> I think we might have. Anna brings news to Sarano and the others that sheds new light on their situation. So, Lord Silvio has been in contact with Esfrost. I heard he made for Whiteholm Castle not long ago. And I received identical reports from several of our spies in Tellior. There is a reason he is known as an opportunist, in which case he has but one objective. Securing Prince Roland to use as leverage with Esfrost. I was also told that House Tellior has hired a man named Rufus as a bodyguard. What do you know about this man? He's a bounty hunter known as Hero's Bane, loyal to none but coin. That said, he's a ruthless fighter. It would be wise not to underestimate him. To think Lord Sylvia would hire such a man. It means he is serious. We must plan accordingly. Understood. Gather the others. We have much to discuss. So Lord Silvio's proposal was all a ruse to ensnare me. Unfortunately so. He has been in contact with Esfrost. But he must have surmised that simply bending the knee would not suffice, and thought to use you to curry favor with the Archduke. Using the Prince's leverage? Has he no shame? We can no longer trust anyone. That dirty scoundrel played us for fools. We made the best choice we could. Had we refused, he would have attacked us outright. Indeed, there are countless soldiers lurking around the premises. So he came prepared for a refusal. I suppose we can expect as much from the famed opportunist. My lord, we must strike before he does. You mean for us to cross blades with Lord Silvio? We have the upper hand now, knowing what awaits. We must do whatever it takes to survive. So the war has already begun. It has. His objective is to capture Prince Roland. Once we are in his territory, he will use the surest measure to secure his highness. In which case... To protect Roland, Serrano and the others decide to play along with Silvio's scheme. Welcome, Prince Roland. Lord Serranoa. A beautiful banquet, just as I promised. I cannot wait to share a glass of Tellior's finest wine with you. Hmm. Likewise, Lord Silvio. We cannot thank you enough for the warm reception. Please, relax, Your Highness. 
as Lord of House Telior, I promise to protect you to my last breath. Thank you. You must be exhausted. Why not have a glass of wine? Did you guys actually? I'm sure you will find it to your liking. I'm guessing he he put something in the drinks, like like a sleep something. <laughs> I swear, I really hate Silvio. Ah, like nectar from the heavens. I should have expected no less of Telior. Please drink your fill. I insist, everyone. I shall. I have never tasted anything quite so delicious. In honor of the fallen. Cheers to the glory of the high houses. We mustn't let our guard down. I should take the chance to learn the lay of the land. Oh wait, can we go down there? I didn't know we could go down here. Hello. Tain ranged eye stone. Interesting. This lake lies within our domain, but it enriches the lives of everyone in Glenbreth. As such, it is my honor to defend it. I, I, I am fine, I assure you. This, <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't know how to do a drunk voice. This is... Only my third glass. Won't you have another, Lord Severin? Shannara Noah. <laughs> Convincing. Oh, she's acting. Okay, so we can just say I was acting as well. Convincing, no? <laughs> I love Gila. I had heard the Tellier Domain was famous for its grape, but the wine is far sweeter than I ever imagined. Lord Silvio is truly a generous man for sharing the bounty of this land with us. It seems the people are unaware of Lord Silvio's plan. It truly is a beautiful banquet, one would have enjoyed were it not a trap. Occasions for celebration are few and far between in times like these. I hope you are able to enjoy the banquet even if only for a moment. Lord Silvio still believes we have fallen into his trap. I suggest taking the opportunity to prepare for the ine inevitable, ugh, inevitable <laughs> battle ahead. Drink in hand, of course. This wine is something incredible. You can tell the grapes got all the sunshine they needed to grow up strong and sweet. You know, they say a life without Tellier wine is a life half-lived. The downright fools to spoil such good drink for their stupid scheme. Ah, so you're Lord Serenoa of Fulford. You, um, hold your liquor very well, sir. Why don't we toast to a Tellier's, a uh, house's Tellier's success. Lake Tellier is the kingdom's water supply, and the dam around it protects Glenbrook from floods. It is the job of House Tellier to watch over the lake and monitor its water levels. We cannot neglect our duties even in the midst of a banquet. Hmm, now I'm wondering if I didn't miss anything the last time I explored here. Because I didn't try going down there the last time I was here, I think. It may seem in poor taste to refuse swine on such an occasion. But a hawk rider must be ready to take flight at a moment's notice. For how's Tellier to have devised such an underhanded plot means they have also fallen on hard times. Eh, I wouldn't say that. I feel like they're just trying to survive no matter what. Iron 3 was found, but your inventory is full. Did I still- Okay, so I didn't pick it up. Obtained invigorating spice. That's useful. I grew up around Lake Tellier. Looking at it always has a way of settling me, setting me at ease. Lord Silvio doesn't look it, but he always yearned to make a name for himself on the battlefield. He'd do anything to hear the people sing his praises like they did House Wilford's during the Salt Iron War. Is that... Okay, so he's just chilling here, like no questions asked. The wine here ain't bad, which is more than I can say for the rest of this place. Edit Marvels of Norzelia, Volume 6 to Notes. One more for the books, yay. Hey, cat. I know what you think of me, you little... You little thing, you. <laughs> You're so adorable. <laughs> Edit Marvels of Norzelia, Volume 5, to notes. Oh, look at that. Volume 5 and 6 were just here. Oh, by the way, some volumes are chapter-specific, so... Because, I, as you might have noticed by now, some items don't appear in an area unless you're in a specific chapter. Like this, we visited Tell Your Domain last time during our... Roland run, but uh, we didn't find the volumes here. That's because they only appear during this specific chapter in Tellier Domain. So, you know, nice things to know. You'd find none prouder to be a soldier of Tellier than my husband, but he cannot seem to muster a smile tonight of all nights. I prepared him some warm ginger wine. Hopefully it will raise his spirits. I heard that the sweet grapes are for eating and the sour ones are for wine. But why would anyone want to drink sour grapes? Blech. 
added salt and fish to notes. <laughs> Do we got fish lore now? Obtain invigorating spice times two. Okay, before I go talk to the important people for this chapter, let me take a look at these notes I got. Marvels of Norzelia, Volume 5. Up the Norzelia River near the Glenbrook S. Frost border, you will find Tellyar Reservoir, a lake of fresh mountain water made from damming up that section of the river. Construction took several long decades, hundreds of workers, and thousands of backbreaking hours of labor. But it was worth it. For the dam now protects the crown city from floods and stores enough clean water to last the kingdom for years to come. Grape orchards have also sprung up on the slope surrounding the reservoir, producing wine that is so famous I need hardly elaborate. Sipping a glass of that wine on a warm summer's eves, whilst gazing upon the luminescence of Tellier's famed street lamps reflected in the reservoir's still surface, Nothing in the realm quite compares to such a pleasure. At the top of a steep mountain path loom the two towers and a giant gate that gives this as frosty stronghold its name, Twins Gate. Situated on the border with Glenbrook, it defends the only passage in the Grand Duchy. For generations, command of Twins Gate had been entrusted to an army general, until recently when Minister Zvarog S. Fro oh sorry, <laughs> I was like, wait what? I forgot that's his last name. For generations, command of Twinsgate had been entrusted to an army general, until recently, when Minister Svarok Esfros was, mm, was inexplicably given the role, sorry. For a giant gate made of iron, it can be opened or shut with surprising speed. I'm not sure of the exact mechanisms that enable the swiftness, as it is a heavily guarded military secret, but according to an Esfrosty soldier with whom I struck up a friendship, they have somehow harnessed the power of the subterranean source of the Norzelia River. Everyone always talks about weaponry when it comes to a frosty ironworking, but perhaps attention ought to be paid instead to the mastery of a craft that has allowed the Deshi to construct such an incredible, precise device so deep in the mountains. Okay, so we got Tellier and Esfrost lore. How many books are we missing? We're missing 11, 12, 13. Oh, is that everything? Did we actually get all the marvels of Norzelia? Wow, I was not expecting that. I thought we were still missing like one more. Oh well, okay, that's cool. I know we're still missing some other notes, but at least the marvels of Norzelia are done. Oh, I forgot we got salt and meat before. <laughs> salt and fish. You could spend a lifetime studying the culinary arts and you still wouldn't come close to learning every method or ingredient out there. Some foods aren't ready until they've been aged a full month. Others take years and years to mature to full flavor. But unique as those flavors may be, they aren't necessarily the most delicious just because they take so long to make. What is the most delicious food, you ask? Well, in my humble opinion, it would have to be sweet fish. Gross. Sorry, I'm not a seafood person. <laughs> Fresh caught from a river in early summer, salted and grilled to perfection over an open flame, Nothing can quite compare to the pleasure of enjoying a piping hot meal. Quaffing or quaffing, <laughs> a nice cold pint as a soft breeze swasps over the water. Perhaps sprinkling a little salt and holding a skewer over a fire doesn't exactly qualify one as a chef, but I don't think I wouldn't trust anyone who sticks their nose up at that simple yet delicious flavor. Okay, so we got fish lore. Well, fish food lore now. Okay, let's go talk to those last couple of people. I can scarcely imagine what you must be feeling right now, Lord Cernal. The joyous days between you and your betrothed were cut short by the invasion. Lady Frederica must be suffering as well, but together, Tellior and Wolford can set things right. It appears he doesn't yet know about Lord Silvio's plot. Thank you. We must do everything in our power to protect those dears to us. Ha <laughs> I wish I had someone dear to me like you do, my lord. Alas, I am yet a bachelor. I pray that I someday find a woman like Lady Frederica to call my own. You needn't worry. A kind soul, soul such as yourself is bound to find a worthy companion in time. To gain something dear is both a blessing and a curse, for you now have something clues. There are merits to living a bachelor's life. Some say marriage is a beginning, and others an end. What say you? I'm gonna go with the top one, because that's sweet. Thank you, my lord. You are every bit as gracious as everyone says. I take it that means things are going well between you and Lady Federica. Indeed they are. The days we have spent together are regrettably few, but she is now a precious member of my family. I must protect House Wilford for her sake as well. 
I envy you, Lord Serena. I hope today I can say the same come sooner rather than later. <laughs> Watch him die in this battle. I really hope he doesn't actually participate in the battle. That'd be unfortunate for him. To think a day would come where one of the high houses turned against another. And under the guise of an alliance, no less. I never thought such a thing possible. What are your thoughts on the matter, my lord? Betrayal is not but another path towards victory. If it comes down to a fight, we must win. As lord of House Wolford, I have no intentions of running from a fright. But I would prefer to do so without needless bloodshed. This is the path House Tellier has chosen to walk. Likewise, we must continue down the one we have chosen. I'm gonna go with the bottom one. I, such is the way of House Wolford. Thank you for reminding me, Lord Serenal. Whatever lies ahead, know that I will serve you with the conviction befitting our house. Thank you, Anna. Those are hardening words indeed. Let me see if I can sell some iron real quick and pick this up. Because otherwise, this is going to bother me for the rest of the run. There we go. Okay, we should be good to go. We got everything we can pick up, and we talked to everyone. So let me just save real quick and we'll end the exploration. End exploration, yes. I should return, lest Lord Silvio get suspicious. Teller's wine truly is superb, but I think you have had more than your fill, Roland. Ah, uh, early. <laughs> I would have another glass or four. How do you do a Tellier voice now that I think about it? He has like a, I wouldn't say high pitch, but you know, like he has a tone to it <laughs> to say the least. You have no idea. No, you have no idea how pleased I am to see you enjoying our domain's wine. But you must be exhausted. Perhaps it is time you retire for the night. That, that was nowhere near right, but whatever. <laughs> I, I think we shall do just that this way, Roland. Hours after the banquet. Prince Roland, are you sure you're not drunk? Hardly. It was all an act. Convincing, no? We cannot let our guard down. The real battle begins now. But of course. I expect they will be here soon. Oh, we got a, a side story. Hello. Oh, this is probably when Landroy's getting invaded, right? The battle to protect Roland from Sylvia's at hand, but how will it end? Probably with us beating up Silvio, but not killing him until until later, apparently. It looks like my special wine put them right to sleep. Seize the prince, and kill the others to the last. Okay, that sounds kind of brutal, you guys. How are you two still moving? It would seem your wine did not have the intended effect. It didn't take a trained eye to see straight through your plan. Your wine found a new home within our breast pockets. You scheming bastards! We could say the same of you. This is where you meet your end, Lord Tellior. That's my line, you whelp! I leave the rest to you, Rufus! Things are finally getting interesting. Careful, your highness. They are after you. Understood. Let us carve a path out of here and regroup with the others.
Oh lord. Please don't tell me we're actually split up like this, like, in groups of two. Oh lord, we are. Okay. Oh, this is gonna be rough, isn't it? Okay, what's recommended first? Let's take a look at that. Uh, Hewa, that makes sense. Milo, that makes sense. Medina, that's good. Okay, Frederica, that's alright, I guess. Anna works. Anybody else? Nope, that's it. Okay, uh, what are we dealing with enemy-wise? Okay, so we're not fighting Tellier, at least. That's cool. Uh, we got Armor Break Raider. Okay, that's normal for him. Charge Mighty Strike, that's whatever. Fire Arrow. Uh, Mighty Strike, Fire Arrow. Okay. Okay, two healers with lower defense. I feel like they might have reinforcements, but... I don't know if this is really too scary. I feel like we can get through this pretty easily. Who else should I put? I feel like Cordelia might be good here. Since she has uh, some decent range for her healing. And she can probably stay stay pretty safe in this battle, I think. I think I'm also going to bring Eridor. This should be fine, I think. Okay, I think that should work. Because that way, Frederica can hopefully stay safe since... um. Flanagan's next to her, and these guys can all get up here pretty easily and, you know, get out of the danger of the boss over here. I'm not giving them any items. <laughs> so far, I haven't been giving uh, my units any items for the battle just because it takes way too long to give everyone, you know, like a good item. And also then I have to, you know, take it off and prepare for the next battle. So I'm probably not going to give anyone any items for now until like uh, the last couple of battles because I'm guessing those will actually be difficult, unlike this first couple of battles. Although I will say that the chapter 1 battle was still extremely annoying, even with all my units at level 50, and most of them having most of their abilities unlocked, and even equipping like, decent accessories to them. Chapter 1 battle is like the most annoying thing ever. Alright, let's hope for the best. Trail beneath the Tlioran moon. The battle begins. Is that Prince Roland? And House Wolfort? Must we really draw swords against them? I mean, you don't have to. Stop your cowering and fight! Spare no one! But leave the prince to me. I'll kill anyone who gets between us. I'm sorry, my friend. Seems I forced you into another uncomfortable situation. Our decision was made together, Roland. We must have faith in the path we chose. To arms, everyone! Let us cut our way through!
I'll try this. For the honor of House yep, Wolf. Sound effects are just gone now. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Well, not like I included that in the video anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. Really? Really? Okay, that's cool. Tell me who to kill. I almost feel bad for you poor whelps. Oh, the sound suddenly and randomly came this. back. Okay, that's cool, I guess. Come and get me. Your orders. You won't catch me. I won't lose. I'll try this. Allow me. Defeat is not an option. Now I oh, am. It hurts. I can tell from that great sword that you're the Wolf Fort well. Indeed. I am Saren Noah Wolfort. And you must be the one they call Heroes Bane. You got that right, boy. And your head will be the next I claim. Okay, cool conversation. I feel like we've had this conversation Tell me who before. To kill. Oh my god, Frederica can finally move out of this area. Tell me who to I'll split you, so you in nice. two. I'll take you on. You're in the way. Silvio, that damn coward. I don't see him anywhere. I surmise that was his intent from the start. At any rate, finding our way out of here comes first.
Okay, so I made this battle way worse than it needed to be, if I'm being honest. I don't know why I thought putting Frederica all out by herself on this side was a good idea. <laughs> I have no idea why. I should have put, um, what's her name? Uh, Cordelia over there and, um, and what's his other name? Uh, Eridor. They would have done so well on this side. I feel so dumb for putting Frederica there. <laughs> All she could do was just literally stand there, gain TP, and try to take care of the enemies. But since um, Flanagan doesn't do enough damage to actually finish enemies off, <laughs> it was they basically just stood there the whole time trying not to die. And then meanwhile, we had Roland <laughs> and Sarah Noah trying to survive on this side, just wasting all of my good healing items <laughs> trying to survive as well from a lance guy and a sword guy. I I feel like I really did get lucky in this battle in that Roland did evade a couple of deadly attacks, but overall this battle just sucked because I made terrible decisions. It probably would have been a, a pretty easy battle slash maybe fun battle had I, you know, not set up my units so poorly. Like I think Putting Milo, Anna, and Huet here wasn't too bad, but putting Frederica and Flanagan over there was definitely super bad. Oh well, at least we won it in the end, at the cost of at a cost of so many healing items. Hopefully, I can gain them back. I won't hold you back. Another thing I probably could have done was just replace um, Cordelia entirely, because. She wasn't too useful in this map. Much obliged. This battle is ours. Not another step. Forward. I won't lose. Just to see that. Oop! I accidentally skipped dialogue again. Cool. I saw a couple of gold spoils, so what did we get? A uh, large HP recovery pellet? I guess I'll take that. And a medal of bravery? I won't take that. <laughs> I would have preferred some more healing items. After wasting so many. Also, I don't know what was going on with the, <laughs> with the sound effects in this battle, but at least it ended up getting fixed. Can we just kill you guys now? I feel like that'd be a good idea, you know, to just kill them now. No, no, no! How could this happen to me? This foolishness ends here, Lord Silvio. Die with honor. Do not sully the repute of the High Houses any longer. And just what good will honor do for me? For anyone? You refused to hand over Roland and received nothing. For your honor, you were attacked, isolated, and betrayed. <clears throat> Even if you kill me, nothing will change. Your deaths are inevitable. I mean, it would save us a lot of trouble down the line if we killed you right here and right now, so... I don't know what you're talking about, Silvio. History will look back and laugh at the fallen house wolf force who could not see past their own noses. I think like they'll I feel like they're more so gonna do that at you, Tellier. I have no idea what you're talking about. Are those your final words? No, not quite. Now, Rufus! You'd better pay me, Silvio! As long as I live, so shall the High Houses. Rest assured of that as you go to your graves. Literally the worst character ever. One mine almost admires tenacity. In any case, I am sure we can overcome any difficulties that await us. Indeed. Glenbrook shall not fall, and neither will House Wolfort. God, I hate Tellier. Literally... No redeeming qualities whatsoever. Sleep with one eye open completed. We can never kill him off early enough.
At the end of the battle against House Wolford, Lord Silvio of Tellior leaves the field defeated. The victors, however, do not go by unscathed. Repeated battles taking their toll on the soldiers. All goes according to Gustadolf's plan to weaken both houses. Landroy falls. Lord of the third of Glenbrook's high houses, faces off against General of Laura. Chapter 8, Part 3, Light and Shadow. Oh wait, we already seen this. Okay, so most of this should be all the same. So, I guess I'm gonna end off the episode. Okay. We're almost there. Almost there. We're almost there. Just think that. Just keep on thinking that to myself. Okay. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode, because I guess I somewhat did. That battle ended up being way more annoying than it needed to be, but at least we got it done. But with that out of the way, I'll see you all next time when we'll be... Actually, I forgot what we're going to be doing next time. <laughs> I literally just looked at it and I already forgot. Oh yeah, I th when I think we'll be finding evidence against uh, Sorcely Ende to finally convict them of his crimes. So look forward to that. Anyways... For real this time, I'll see you next time. Bye!